All right, we're live, so we'll call the meeting to order. This is August 6, 2019, the Hopkinton Conservation Commission. And we have a document for review done. Yep, is that certificate of compliance you guys approved at the last meeting? Okay. In the draft minutes for review, July 9th, 2019. Did everyone get a chance to look at those? Yep. Any comments? Nope. nope. We can get a motion to approve the minutes, please. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? All right. In Valley, 76 Pine Island Road, review of unpermitted site activities. Good evening. How are you doing oh, tonight? Good. Hi. Hi. My first visit, so. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Just bringing up the uh, photos yeah. here. Sure. So you just built a shed on the property. So, yeah, basically we had um, um, this shed. Um, there was a, a let's see if we get a better angle on it. So um, there was an existing shed on the on the plant. See if I can get you. Uh, Thank you. It's a nice basketball court there. The girls like it. Let's see if we can get up an old plan. Oh, I have an old one for you too. I think. <coughs> So there was a, an existing shed um, right here. Um, it got knocked. Um, it got knocked down and replaced with a new one. There's a new shed um, in this area, and the old plan didn't have um, any uh, any docks noted. So um, there have been a couple of docks uh, installed on the site. Okay. And then some maintenance activity on the on uh, on this. Uh, existing uh, concrete patio uh, and then there was some steps put along the edge here so we just um, asked Mr. Ballas just to stabilize um, the area be able to see right through here there was um, some exposed soils mm -hmm. so we're just looking to have um, that area um, stabilized uh, this year and the erosion controls here continued just to you know take into account if any of this uh, wanted to wash he was going to have um, the sill fence um, entrenched, and basically the um, the docks are shown on a on the GIS. We had we got a, a dock here, and we got a photo of. Yeah, this mm -hmm. one right here isn't hasn't shown up on the, on the okay. GIS, so seems like it seems like it could be all done as a after the fact application mm -hmm. for the commission. Right. So presumably you didn't know that you had to come before us before you did the work. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so typically when you're this close to a resource area doing the work, um, Here's all the you know, there's a notice of intent that's required. Okay. Um, so, uh, I think all of this is work that we would have permitted. Um, we just need to go through the proper, you know, procedures of doing that. So, in this case, um, since, you know, you didn't know that you needed to get a permit to do the work we were doing, we would do an after the fact filing. Okay. Um, so I think we would just ask you to jump as I can work with you. I okay. can send you the documents and you can read it over and we can we can try and process it. Most of them are state documents are kind of confusing, so okay. we'll just work our way through it. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, we just ask that the area remain stabilized and you extend those erosion control barriers over so that nothing gets into the lake. Um, and then once we get the permit in place then you can, you know, do the work. 
So okay. that's all right. The silt fences are up, and our plan was to leave them up until the hydro seed takes place and it's all fully grown grass back through the fall, and then remove them if that's sufficient. Yeah, yep. that works you can, good. You can contact okay. us, and once I can go out and take a look, and if it's all stabilized, I can give you a green light to take those erosion controls out. Okay. 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 So you just if you can contact Don and he can you know, work you through there. the process. Okay. Do you, right. Would you like to keep these or should I keep them? Um, All right. Can you email keep them, them to for the file? Yeah, them. I'll, uh, I'll okay. scan them and put them in the file. Okay. Or if you want to email me too, that's I can great. email you. That's so awesome. That's keep less fantastic. paperwork on your desk. Yep. I right. like that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, question. Yep. Since I'm here, <laughs> um, if so that's called a poly dock. It just sits on top of the water, kind of goes up and down. Yeah. If I need to put in a dock, a real dock, do I just come uh, here to a meeting or do I apply through an application process? Yeah, if you wanted to do that, you could do it through this notice of intent. Oh, well, actually, we're doing it after the fact. So, um, yeah, because once, 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 once he has the notice of intent, and the order would be good for three years and if he was looking to do a project change because uh these posts that you got here are in the lake bed right they're four steel galvanized posts that keep the dock yeah, in place they and they can be pulled out if they need to they're just right. hit in with a map. yeah they went yeah they get hit into the into the lake bed right they don't yep. just rest on top they get correct they get drunk yeah they'll yeah. go down six to 18 inches right okay so yeah the way chapter you know 91 looks at it that would be considered a dock right you know so okay. it's not like something that he can just pull up easily onto the you know out of the lake right it's know, not like so. the swimming platforms you know that you have an anchor right and then right. you can just remove it at the end of the year i think you can remove this too but it's just not a i got float, just floating I have to float on it out of there before the water goes down yeah. right yeah exactly yeah okay so you can um get the notice of intent filed with us the after the fact and then if you want to put a dock in we can do that as a project change request okay all right okay and you have three years to do that three so, years yeah. okay okay good all if right if you need more time you could always ask for an extension permit too okay, okay. You know. yep everything's been graded and loomed and soiled and silted and so forth great okay appreciate it all right. okay thank you all right thank you all right Whole day. Good evening. So um, the reason we asked you to come in, and you're not the same gentleman that was here before. Okay. Um, but you guys have requested a uh, extension for the order of conditions at the site. Right. And we had a discussion um, uh, a few months ago about a property on the south portion of the legacy farm site. And essentially what had happened to get you up to speed, um, you may or may not know this, but there was a homeowner. I do uh, know this. Okay, so he mm -hmm. was told by Polte that you know he could put the fence wherever he want and ended up in the resource area um we had the homeowner come in we had both they come in we had a discussion asked you know the two parties to work it out um yeah. just, with, just to be clear this is just Ms. uh I'm mike mike Mar Mar from marshonda marshonda just the engineering consultant right for okay the applicant so okay yeah, yeah. no one representing pulte is before the commission well, you're I mean, here you know, representing no them. You just yes. know, employee of both mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'm familiar with that situation. Yeah. Um, with the uh, barriers, and uh, I actually was one responsible for setting the barriers um, and doing the survey work uh, on the project. Okay. So um, I was disappointed to find out from the homeowner that you know I guess he had talked to Polte. And was willing to, you know, work out some type of arrangement where, you know, he would split the cost with you guys, you know, pay for half of it. And he was told by Polte that, you know, we're not going to cover this. You know, you have to bear the expense of moving the fence, which I don't think is right, since, um, you know, it was actually Polte who told him you can put the fence wherever you want. And then he found out. I don't, I don't think they told him that. So but I have an email right here that he sent me that. 
does say that. So, um, but neither, neither here nor there with me. I, that's a Pulte issue. With yeah, so that's a Pulte oh. issue. Um, I have the email from Pulte, uh, and the uh, it was Aaron um, Sullivan, who you know told him he can put the fence wherever he wants. So basically, I think what I would like to do is ask Pulte to reimburse this homeowner um, for the fence before we approve the um, extension of the order of conditions. And I'll just leave this with you. This is the invoice um, that he paid for it. And I can get you a copy of the email if you need that to give the Pulte. Um, but, you know, that's kind of what the thought is. So is this the only issue that's holding up the extension? That's the only issue. Yeah. Do we have any? Because the commission didn't help? get a chance to review this. This this information came in after the the last meeting. You guys had it on the docket for the twenty third, um, and basically just asked for a rundown of what um, what had been done to date, what was left to to do, and uh, they were able to provide that information. I'm pretty sure I sent it out to the members and if you guys don't have any issues with that yep I did see that I think that's fine Don um, so that that's really the only outstanding thing so I can I can talk to them about this okay and uh, let them know that, that um, I don't know how would we resolve this in the short term I have them give you a check or something or Just they can give the homeowner the check and then he can let the commission know and then we'll do we have to go to another meeting for this for the extension or no would, you know, no I, be predicated on having this resolved basically right I think that's what the uh -huh. commission's and will the extension be for three years or or did, will it be what was the original request for i that? think it was three because i when i read the yeah when i read the extension. order it yeah. said it would be at three years so i tried to give you an indication that it may the project may linger a little bit longer right. than that and I didn't know if you wanted to extend that a little bit longer to incorporate that or to have us come back three years from now and see where we're at with that. I think it can only be a three. It and can then, only do that. And then you guys would make sure you, you know, if you're not finished in three, you, just like you're doing now, mm -hmm. you know, you'd uh, put a request around at least 30 days right. ahead, you know. Mm -hmm. When you're making note here, I think we should, you know. Yeah. I think most of the work in the buffer zone will be done. But, uh, you know, by the time you get through with as built and getting everything in order to submit to you for a certificate of compliance, it just takes a while, right. except for something like that so large. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I'll go back to them and, uh, and tell them what, them what okay. their feelings are. Yep, appreciate right. that. Very and, good. And we can give you the background information. And we have the, uh, it was three Winsong Drive, I believe. I believe one. so, yeah. Was yeah, the, I'm, I'm familiar with the situation. <coughs> I don't get involved in that type of thing, but um, um, I know everybody has their viewpoint of what happened there. So. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If they want to come back and schedule a time to talk to the commission about it, they can contact me and I, I can put it on the agenda mm -hmm. if, if they want. If they, okay. All right. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, Golden Pond, 50 to 60 West Main Street. This is a project change request. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Doug Noble. I'm the uh, Director of Operations down at Golden Pond. Mm -hmm. With me is Joe Marquardt, uh, a civil engineer of record. Um, we came, we're coming here tonight in front of you to um, request an amendment to our order of conditions. Um, our existing order that we're working under right now, we're in the last uh, three months of completing the construction on phase three and in a couple of weeks we're going to be starting the work down in our back basins um, both basins as part of the existing order of conditions mm -hmm. um, what we're here tonight to ask you is there's a a knoll up behind this four basin um, that sits pretty flat and we were looking at it and wanted to um, turn the area about 750 square feet into a uh, small tranquility park for our residents. It has pretty good access along the existing path where we can connect to this little knoll area right here. Okay. Um, so 
we've shaped it in the form of like an amoeba because we want to keep the grade as flat as we can. So instead of making it square or something where it may not fit as a square, just be able to make it so that the grade stays pretty flat up here. Okay. And you're just going to have like a seating area with Correct. plants and stuff there? Yeah. Okay. I think that's fine. That's on the right with the commission. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and that's the extent of the yeah, request. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I get a motion to approve the project change request as discussed. So moved. In a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks much. Tranquility Park. It's all right. Tranquility now. Tranquility now. Tranquility now. Yeah, yep. Um, we're at 745. Okay, REC Hopkinton, 0 South Street. This is an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation, which is a continuation. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Scott Goddard, Goddard Consulting. And hopefully, I think we'll be able to bring out the conclusion to this ANRAD application. Um, tonight it's been going on for some time but we're just trying to get full documentation of the resource areas the green is all BBW it's been reviewed uh, by by Matt and then we after s extensive discussion added this very kind of fringe IVW area mm -hmm. under the bylaw although I, I hope that you know maybe when we come for a project there might be some consideration that this area could be potentially altered and made some other improvements on site because it's very 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 marginal but the last thing that's been on the table was whether or not there was anything up in this area back in here that would qualify as a vernal pool. And we, Don, we sent a report to you. I have hard copies if you guys want to see them tonight. Yeah, but, can you but, have one, please? Yeah. Thank you. And, and if, if you cheer. Yes. Just take a look at the attendance. Uh, Ed not here. And Kerry not here. There was only there would only be three members who have attended all meetings. Okay. Does that mean we're unable to vote? Is that what you're saying, Tom? You'd uh, be moving it um, at your own risk. At your own risk. Rolling, uh, oh, I see. Rule. You wouldn't have a you know majority of mem all members have attended all meetings. So the workaround. I don't know if you want to wait till a little later. We might be expecting Miss Reed um, at 8:30. I don't know. If, oh, I don't know if the meeting will go that long. What do you say? I think we can just, or you just take, with it. Or you just move forward. Okay. So, uh, I guess the most critical thing is if you look on page two, you know, we we, we did find fish in this area. This was by dip netting. Um, the, the area, there's a beaver dam up against 495. This area has water that's just deep, even this time of the year. You know, it's really acting more pond like. It has a it has a, a stream connection um, to the downstream lake and you know it allows fish to navigate upstream and then come into this area so with the presence of fish the lack of a defined basin and just a bunch of facultative species that are tip indicative of, of most every BBW in town you know I, I just have a hard time seeing anything in here that that would um, meet uh, a, any reasonable definition in my mind, of a vernal pool. Mm -hmm. I think that the presence of fish is... Right. The, that, so that, was, the, that was what we were looking for. The, the, the like that. So I'd like the commission um, to make a finding of, of there not being any vernal pools on site as part of the ORAD. But if, if that is agreeable to the commission and, 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 uh, and Matt, then we would seek to close this hearing and issue an ORAD affirming BBW. Um, no perennial stream, no vernal pools, and the presence of bylaw only IVW. Half to two inches in length, some of four inches. There were a bunch more swimming around in there, but this is just the ones that we could catch quickly yeah. with the dip net. You could see them swimming pretty. Okay, prevalent. I think that's the evidence that we were looking for, Matt. Do you have any? Uh, Don and I had chatted a little bit about, I guess the only question we had was that with the um, beaver dam activities, mm -hmm. is that 
creating an impoundment? Or do, basically the question is, do you think those fish can always get up into that area? Or do you think that the beaver dam has impounded it such that well, they probably they if prob that were to I mean, go they away, probably, they probably get up from the lake, right downstream, and then they get up there, and they maybe they get trapped in there with the beaver activity. It's hard to know what exactly would happen if, if and when that beaver dam goes away. I think the water is artificially higher right now than it would otherwise be because of the beavers. Right. You know, because um, it wasn't until you guys told us at the last meeting that the culver was and normally. The DPW's got a town-wide permit to, to clean this out where right. we've been fighting beavers all over town. Right. So I did notify DPW that there may be another one there. So they're going to they're gonna check that out. And typically if they find, yeah, and if it's something that they can access right. and clean, they're going to they're gonna manage it. But either way, the fish got there somehow, right? I mean, so they, the fish made their way in there. Right. I guess, yeah. I guess my, I guess our question is, is because the way your conclusions, you said due to the, um, the inundation right so that's what we're wondering wherever the vernal pool area would be would it normally be inundated you know it's inundated now because of the beaver activity. right probably I mean but if it, if the beaver activity went down and the, and the water receded to its normal channel would it would it still you know impound the, the vernal pool area these are hard questions to answer <laughs> Exactly. Right, because they're you know what it looks like without a beaver dam there when there only is a beaver dam there. We're, we're kind of we're kind of guessing, right? Because beavers change well, the, hy the hydrology there. We wait a little while, the DPW might be able to clear that culvert, and we can go back out and look at it. And, uh, but the fish are already in there. What's that? The fish are already in there now. But I guess. But the the question is, can the fish reach the vernal pool area? They're, they're reaching it now because it's excessively inundated so our question is 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 it is the vernal pool area usually inundated it's really i mean have you seen it it's not really a vernal pool <coughs> looking kind of area it's just a big flooded wetland you know i mean it's it vernal pools are, are to find basins right. that support certain species this is not that right i mean we, uh, there was no indications of of the indicative you know, obligate vernal pool species. I know the bylaw is a little more vague on facultative species, but these facultative species are in every wetland in the town of Hopkinton, right? So that's kind of a rough definition that's in the, in the bylaw. But with the with the fish there, I mean, they're there, and that's all I can go on. It, you right. know, and, and just looking, I mean, I've been looking at these kind of wetlands for 25 years, and nothing about this yells at me, this is a vernal pool, you know? So once the fish are there, and without the species present, you know, I think that concludes the story. And I can't speak to what it would look like without the beaver dam, to be honest. There's no detailed topo that's been done through there? In the wetland, no. Mm -hmm. But, the, I mean, it's it's that deep right now, but if you go out there. Okay. Questions or comments from the commission? Questions or comments from the audience? All right, if I can get a motion to close and approve the resource and area delineation um, absent the vernal pool based on the evidence that's been provided. So moved. And a second, please. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? And is there any issues with the voting on that because of what Don was saying earlier, or is that good? We made the vote, and we're going to issue it and then okay. if someone wants to appeal that there wasn't enough people. Got it. Right. Um, okay. I don't think that'll be the case. Okay. But, you know, the rest okay. Thank case. you very yeah. much. Okay. Have a good night. Yeah. Okay, Eversource, fifty two and fifty five Wilson Street. Good evening. Oh, Good evening. Uh, Jeff? Yeah. I don't know if you wanted yeah, to follow. Right. Um, Shepard was, was next on the. Oh, I need, okay. I already crossed them off. Sorry. No worries. Uh, sorry <laughs> about that. Only if they're in the audience. <laughs> Mr. Shepard, come on up. 26 West Elm, West Elm Street. This is an exemption request. Yeah. Good evening. Sorry about that. No problems. We have a shed that you want to put on property? That's yes. correct. Okay, it's in lawn area yes, currently. It is. It is. Yeah. But we wanted to bring up some of the old information. 
yep. if you have the commission's review. Sure. So basically you've got the old wetland line here, mm -hmm. and then you've got a new delineated wetland here. Mm -hmm. And did you have a size of a scalable plan? Mm -hmm. um, is the right. is the shed within twenty five feet of the uh, the, the wetlands at the time because the let me just get a bring the commission back up to speed on sure the more popular thing. I bring up the electronics on this too so basically and obviously these folks just bought the house what, a year two, ago, two, two years, years ago. ago. Yep. Okay. So this all predates them. This was just a recent plan that they uh, that they generated for um, for the property. That's great. So here's the uh, here's the old plan, and we've got. Has built in here, so that's what the commission approved back in the day. And then, um, when it got constructed, there was a, an add-on pool and some disturbance that went into the resource area at that time. So, so that was permitted, though, right? The pool. Uh, no, but uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't approved. It didn't come in as a okay, project change. But it was on the as-built. Yeah. Belt. So then it came back in the as-built. So then, when the commission was reviewing the certificate of compliance application, they had first issued a partial. So, so they basically, issued a parcel saying home is construct home is constructed pool and associated grade and constructed adjacent to wetland. All debris is removed within a 25-foot border of the wetland and no future activities that are to take place in the area. So then um, then they issued a, so obviously uh, that was like in uh, May, and then a couple of weeks later, they went back, obviously it looks like they went back out and they just said no work, no additional work should be done in the future within a 25-foot of the buffer zone. So it looked like the commission was trying to incorporate a 25-foot limited area of no disturbance on mm -hmm. the site so i guess obviously some of the some of the area in here looks like you've got you know a wood pile here and you've got lawn and I, I just didn't have a scaled plan so if i can break out a scale looks like some of the looks like this some, since this was issued in 93 plus you had a um you had um, a bump out here and a, and a garage mm -hmm. that was built mm -hmm. after the certificate of compliance. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you basically look at the ASBO plan, this is what the commission approved at the time. So after the certificate of compliance, and obviously before these folks <laughs> bought it, you had a garage added on and some, uh, like a, an addition over here. So it's, I'm just wanting to get all this information before okay. the commission if they think this is something that would not need a an application i just don't know the yeah i mean this was before these folks own the property right so right right um and what's the date on this now that's from 1993 so they were able to show this wetland line on the plan and then they redelineated where they believe the wetlands are today so you've got two, two lines showing. Yeah, so this is the new border, right? That's the old one. The old one's the dash. One. The dash line. Oh, okay. so that's the old, old one. one. Right. So obviously and the, ex the, the existing, the new right. one is this one. Yeah. Oh, this is the. Yeah. Yeah. So it's further away. So there's okay. There's there's long, you know, long. This creep is all is, long. Yeah. So you have basically long creep and some looks like some wetland fill, since mm. the commission issued a certificate of compliance. I just wanted to, that information. Do you guys use this portion of the lawn over here near the wetland? Use? No. I I've mean, got some photos of I, I, I the mean, I, I've cleaned up some wood that was lying around there, but that's, that's about it. Um, so the shed's fine. That's well outside the 25 feet. Um, and this was all work that 
was done, you know, before you, you yep. folks bought the yep. property. Yep. And now we're aware so of the uh, of the wetlands, which yeah. we weren't before. So I mean, mm -hmm. with this being this lawn area being so close right. to the wetland, I mean, would you be averse to just letting this grow out to like meadow? The, actually, the lawn the lawn is this line. Oh, this line. That's yeah. the line. So it's just a little bit. There's like a wall there, and then there's just a little bit of, you know grass i don't mow it or anything it just gets so it's just allowed to grow yep okay how's the lawn over here there is none this is all so woods that's all woods we've got some site yeah here's some pictures so yeah all right the stakes are approximately right. where the shed would like go. To put the shed. Mm -hmm. so here's the wood pile that's on the uh yep. on the plan is that stone wall he's yep. talking about um looks like it was um some wetland filled back in mm -hmm. this area. Yep. And basically all all through here. It's yep. basically it was you can tell there was old, you know, yeah. Yard waste. It's a yard waste dump, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I was unaware of that uh situation and now I'm aware of it. So yeah, so we just asked that you occur. don't put any yard waste back Understood. there. Understood. Um, yeah. You know, to the extent that you can maybe clean out some of the grass clippings and things like that. Sure. You know, that'd be helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's okay. And then I think, like you said, you're not mowing back here anyways. No. So, you know, you can just, just let, like that, let it go. Yeah, and let Absolutely. that go. Um, and then I think the, the shed's fine. So that's well outside the 25 foot buffer. Okay. And it's on existing lawn. So. Does that sound reasonable to everyone? And the tree is staying the maple? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. I think we're good then. It's an exemption request, so we don't have to vote on it. Okay. okay. So, all right. Thank all right. you. We'll send you a follow-up letter. Okay, great. Thank all you. Right. Thank good you luck. very much. And that's what we need for, um, to request the ZDA. The ZDA. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you need copies? Or? Um, I think we have, we have the as-built. Um, oh, yeah, can you give me a copy of what? Yep. Yep. yep, one of those. So we'll need one. Okay, great. All right, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. They need a variance. Side set back. <coughs> okay, Eversource. Thank you. <laughs> Musical chairs. How's it going? It's going well. So, almost the usual crew. <laughs> yep. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm Denise Bartone from Eversource, the environmental permitting lead. Jim mm -hmm. Blackburn from Eversource. And um, Jean Christie from Time Bond. Dana's on vacation, so we dragged her. Out. Okay. So, um, Don had contacted us. Um, just to give the commission an update as to some of the uh, challenges we've had with um, the site uh, for the look with action project. Mm -hmm. um, we provided a memorandum um, that provides a synopsis of kind of what the challenges have been and how we've addressed them um, each time. Mm -hmm. um, so we started the, the project um, early June um, where we started construction and um, from basically June to end of July, we've had numerous rain events, three of which were um, more like a high intensity, a lot of rain in a short period of time. And it was during those events that we had some discharge of sediment into uh, or off site into um, an in intermittent stream that's north of the facility. Um, so what we provided you was um, a synopsis of each event and what we did not only immediately um, when it was observed um, on site as well as a plan to correct those um, correct the issue um, which was we found out as we were doing our construction that there was um, an existing pipe um, a stormwater pipe that pretty much fed from the uh, construction area into the existing facility. And then it would discharge around the facility, and correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, that would then discharge off-site into the intermittent stream and 
in, into uh, the wetlands. Okay. So um, with the, after we uncovered this pipe on June 11th, literally a couple of days later, we had the intense storm event. We had straw bottles installed immediately to try to slow down the velocity of the water. We developed a plan to put, install check dams into the existing stormwater system to slow it down and try to settle out the um, suspended solids. We had another storm event on the 20th. We, um, again, the intense rain, mm -hmm. we observed the sediment. At that point, we're looking to clean out the existing system, any potential sediment that might have been in there, residual. Um, so we cleaned out the system. Uh, installed flock logs uh, that would also help precipitate out some of the, um, the sediment and additional riprap, um, basically throwing as much as we could at it to try to, to solve this problem. Um, and unfortunately on July 12th, um, another short uh, intense storm, we did have additional sedimentation um, getting into the stream. So at that point we plugged the pipe. Okay. <laughs> um, we're like, all right. When all else fails. Uh, yeah, all else fails. We're <laughs> plugging the pipe. And what we did was within the existing um, uh, uh, limit of disturbance um, for our project, we redirected the stormwater flow, the majority of it, so that it's, it's kind of creating a little sump near where we plan on putting the, um, the sedimentation basin for the project. Okay. So it's all in uplands. It's nowhere near the, um, the uh, uh, the stream is <laughs> okay. nowhere near the um, IVW, which is actually upslope there up the hill. So um, okay. we just wanted to bro provide you just the corrective actions that we've done, how we've been trying to stay on top of this and hopefully resolve the issue. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate that. I, I read through the summary and it seems like you guys, unfortunately, we had a few rain events, you know, that happened over a three week period. So we've had some challenges in a couple of the other sites in town as well. Um, but we appreciate you guys being proactive about it because not everyone is. So that's the first thing. And I think it was, from what I could tell, it looked like you were implementing the appropriate measures and, and mitigation. Um, I mean, I don't think there was anything else that they could have done. In that. Um, no, I, I think, I think the as you said, I think the reaction has been good. I think the contractors going to done a good job of kind of setting things up. I think, I guess the only comment I would make is. This kind of shows what happens when you neglect your drainage system over a long time and it fills up with sediment and then you do something else and it kind of causes a, a domino effect where you do get problems. So I think if anything, it, it should kind of reiterate that if you keep up with your stormwater systems and keep them clean all the way along, then if you're doing something else, you kind of don't get this secondary issue. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's a good, good insight. But we, you know, we appreciate you guys staying on top of it and, and uh, um, you know, trying to mitigate it. So I, I know it was challenging, but, um, okay. So any questions or comments from the commission? So that pipe remained plugged until the site's stable? Is Correct. that the plan? Mm -hmm. And then it will be unplugged once? Uh, yeah, it, I think it will be unplugged once. I think we have a construction staging area that okay. is going to happen it's going to stay active the whole time so that's i think it will stay plugged for a while okay. until all that site is stabilized yeah and then when all the work's done you'll let it flow yeah oh. or is it being removed oh, is that, yeah. that 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 drain i'm sorry i'm henry tarver with tsc we're doing the construction site um uh, that drain eventually comes out it, it's going to a manhole and there's another drain coming across the loading area inside there all that's going to come out Eventually, a load area gets brought up. We, we're going to be installing new catch basins and drainage in that area. Yeah. Okay. Got to catch everything. So, yeah, make sure it all be taken care of. Okay. Yeah, I think with the new catch basin, yeah, it provides the right. hooded yeah. sump. Right. Okay. So, it should be some pre-treatment. So, what you guys put in will be better than what's there now. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Replace it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. I think um, there's no questions from the commission. We're done on that. I think we're all set. We appreciate you coming in. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Much. <laughs> Schroyer, 7 Wilson Street. This is another exemption request. Yeah, I don't think they'll be in attendance. Uh, okay. They were able to 
provide me with a bunch of the information. This was the tree removal, right? Um, yeah. Um, I'm going to break that open for you guys. Is this the same uh, fellow that submitted the NOI? Or is it a new no. one? No. Yeah, this is, um, this is different. Okay. So, he had, um, it, it came in, 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 uh, in uh, over time, it, it, it kept, it, it kept changing. So, um, kept expanding. Yeah. Like, uh, I, um, I was out on the site on 2016 where he had, where he'd asked to do some of the uh, Vista pruning. Right. So I, I had given him approval there. And then. Um, Those are the big trees, right? And the really big ones? Yeah, and I can give you, I can give you a look at the photos I took. Um, so, so when you're looking right along the street here, he's got a, a series of uh, trees down in this area. Mm -hmm. And then this was just pruning, so, you know, it, it was um, uh, already previously um, reviewed back in 16. And then um, when we when we talked back, because he, he filed an exemption quest in 2016 and 17, and when he showed me, the, this was before he talked about these trees, I said, because the, um, the topography is extremely st steep here, um, you know, it's like this with, with a lot of boulders, so I'm like, yeah, you you know, you you're drawing it's it's outside the hundred, but you know I can't confirm it. You know he's taking an old sketch plan from '04 for the property when there was proposed um, um, soil testing that they were mm -hmm. going to go down this old cot path. So the delineation is is outdated. There's um, potential vernal pool in here that's that's not shown. So I wasn't quite sure the extent of if he's if 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 the 125 is anyway close to here. I'm not sure if it's extending beyond here, mm -hmm. and I couldn't confirm whether these trees are in and out. But my guess in some of the location he has them, there were trees behind the house, so it, it, it's sort of a, a, a rough area. But I know he wanted to take the trees out along here and back in the day, and I was able to confirm that. Yeah, that that was clearly that was outside clearly our outside our jurisdiction. Um, but basically. You know, it would be on him to show that the trees are outside. You know, right. so then it's like, then it's just. It, I think it would it would be for you guys to review if you guys thought you were okay with. Uh, they were all all live trees, so you've got a tree right here on the uh, on the everything that's that's marked with the yellow band. So he's looking at taking that tree out, and this area of trees is uh, in prep. He he was hoping to do a a driveway in here, so he would. He would try and remove these trees and prep for another for prep for another filing. So he's got one here, and he's got one here, and that's the tree right there. So he, it had some dead branches. And I said, "Yeah, you can prune the dead branches if you want," but most of the crown was was mm -hmm. still alive. So but those are the uh, the trees right in this area, uh, and then the rest of the photos are along along right here. I, I, I don't see where the trees are coming this way. Um, yeah, those two there, uh, back on the plan, Don? Yep. I mean, I know it was delineated in 2004, so that was 15 years ago. Right. Um, but it looks like, you know, the, the row along the 100-foot buffer there. Up here? Yeah. Yeah. Those, I think, he would need to demonstrate that they are in fact outside the 100 foot buffer zone right and the then, other then, it, then it would be you know outside your jurisdiction then it's like okay right to me i'm like well if you can't prove it's 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 outside then the commission has to assume that it's in until he can show that it's that it's out he would have to delineate survey and then survey locate the uh, the trees you know so i don't think he was interested in that i think he's looking for the commission to look at these as you know in your jurisdiction because he hasn't shown that they're outside your jurisdiction um, yeah i mean if it was one tree then i think we could give him some a little bit of leeway but i mean it, right so here is yeah so this tree was located right right and i th he's mocked it so it's it's directly behind the house and then you start getting off to the side um, the, the pine trees here um, 
and here's some of the you can see some of the large boulders and the, the land just drops off mm. pretty steeply right through here so you've got trees growing basically on top of you know what was probably cleared and rubble for the for the house you know um, so is the house there now yeah oh yeah yeah so basically so they built the house okay yep so the house is is That's right the here house right yep. there. so you've got you get some of these trees that are obviously within striking distance of the house but as you get further away so these three might might you know would, would definitely be within the uh, hit, hitting the lawn area they may hit the house and then as you go further on the other side of the of this rock you start hitting these trees here so there's that big erratic right there so you got um, he, he was looking to take these out this is the only one that looked like it had you know some structural integrity right, issues yeah. here you so, know so that one I don't have a problem right. with if that was at risk of hitting the house right and then, uh, is that is that why he wants to take all these down? Because he's afraid they're going to hit the house. Look, definitely the uh, I think he definitely had concerns with, you know, obviously, and he's not showing, that, but there is one right behind the house. Then there's um, uh, three right here. So the ones that are on this side of the rock, mm -hmm. I think. But then when you start getting on the other side of the rock, I don't think you're now you're now yeah. you're now you're at yeah. risk of hitting the lawn area. Right. You okay. know. So. So is he, so if you, can you go back to that plan one second, please? Yes, definitely. So is he, so the house up in the top there hasn't been built? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. So Yeah, this was, this was back in 04, previous property owner. So um, he didn't, he, he wasn't involved in this RDA application. So but, does uh, he own that prop? Because I, I, yeah, I recall that I read something about him getting, prepping for the driveway installation or something? Yeah, so he... Because uh, uh, I've got to see. At, at first, he was looking to do a driveway here when I was talking with him in 2017. Now he's looking to do uh, a driveway over here to his existing house. Yeah. So okay. yeah. Because right now this this driveway um, is probably you know I think they have concerns with it you know right in front of the house. So they're looking to um, move it off to the side. So right. I would think you'd be looking at a. So we need an, a new delineation if he wanted to do that. I think, I think he'd be Anyways. submitting an application to, if he's going to do a driveway. But right now it's like just a tree request, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, well, that makes, if the trees are gone, then yeah. all of a sudden it makes it easier to approve the driveway. Right, right. But it would still be <laughs> right. Yeah. But basically, and it's like what I was telling him, I was like, where you're looking, this area is is undeveloped. You know, so and if that's within 125 feet of the, the vernal pool or 100 feet of the uh, the wetland, then yeah, you need if you get if because it's it's like a little valley, you know, and he would want to fill it in, maybe put a a, a a retaining wall so he could so he could get access to it. Mm. And that's why I was like, well, you'd be looking for a filing here, and if you moved it further down, over here into the lawn, you know, it might it might. It might be an RDA application, whereas if you're trying to get through here, you're yeah, looking at a notice of intent because it's not disturbed, right. you know? Yeah. So, you know, if you're looking to do this, so I go, that's something you'd have to figure out moving forward, you know? Yeah, okay. So with the trees, I think, you know, if they're close to the house and they're at risk of falling on the house, and I think those are okay, so there's a couple of the trees. That well, maybe he needs to identify which, why which trees, why he wants to remove each tree, and then yeah, so you know, that'll clear it up. Yeah, maybe, maybe we need a little bit more information from him. Because the request was going on and on um, in a couple of different, um, but basically, maybe we should ask him to come in. Yeah. Okay. You know, and then he can shed a little bit of light on why, right. you know, he wants to take all those trees down. Because there's quite a few of them. Right. Yeah, I guess he just <coughs> points out the ones he wants. Yeah. And the, he doesn't really provide a rationale. And, you know, we should probably just let him know that if they're not at risk of falling and hitting the house, then, you know, in order for us to... You know, we need to know where the new wetland delineation is since it's so old. 
you know, and it may be outside the well, and he doesn't even have to come before us. Right, exactly. You know, for yeah. the tree removal, if he wants to put the driveway in, that's another thing, but. Right. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, so you want me to ask him to come in for the next meeting, and you guys can yeah. have a formal right? discussion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do that. Come in with a better map, or are we hoping to do conversation well, that we can yeah. work it out? I, well, yeah, I would say come in with a idea to I feel like if he comes in with that same map, we're not going to. No, I would want to know closer. which trees exactly you were moving for why. For assuming they're all within the hundred, I would want to say this one. I'm afraid is going to hit the house. Yeah, you. This you, one, I just want to yeah, take out because I don't like it. This one, right, is dead. I assume he could explain his, well, he's got the his rationale on. for these. You know, because yeah. these are these are pruning. He thought this was dead, but. I, I, I called it alive. Did you say there's a couple more under that note that we don't see? Yeah, because like like the blue triangle, live trees. He, he's talking about three the three trees down here in the blue. And then he's talking about um, the right, oak. So it's not one tree with that blue oh, mark. Right, 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 exactly. Yeah. That's a section of three That's trees. Area. Yep. Then then there's the oak. Then these he was just looking to um, do some pruning, but you know for the ongoing health and vigor of the trees. These are the ones that he wants to cut down and remove, you know, mm -hmm. down to the ground. So, I no. thought you were saying, and Don, and maybe this is what Melissa is referring to, where it says existing residents directly behind the house. Did you indicate earlier that there were trees there? Yeah, the way I see it, yeah. There's, but he's not looking to cut those down, or they just don't show was, up on the was, map because it was of the kind of confusing because I'm like, well, I see a marked tree, and it's directly behind right, the house. Okay. And then there was another one pretty much on the corner. And he sort of had them. A little farther than I, you know, there was at least one here, you know, right. about 40 feet off. So and the others were all within 30 feet of the existing house. I just sort of just ran a, a tape off the corner of the house and um, tried to get a sense. And so to me, I, but we're also not entirely sure if that 100 foot line is correct, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's part of a new map as well. Exactly. You know. Okay. So. so it doesn't, I mean, from that, it doesn't look like any of them he's afraid are going to hit the house. He's not cutting, he's not showing any being cut down that would hit the house. Maybe that one at the end of that row to the right. Or yeah, the ones think, that aren't marked. I would think. But they have ribbon on them. <laughs> <laughs> this, tree, this tree definitely is right behind the house and it's fairly sizable. And you can see how close this one is, you know, mm. to the house. It's like right at the edge of the, the, uh, the, the landscaping. Yeah, you know, and then the other ones that are off back in here. So you're looking at three trees here and that tree is probably right over in this area those two in the back look pretty small yeah back here yeah, yeah. you know they would definitely yeah. reach they would definitely reach the landscaping area not the uh, I'm not sure they may or may not you know okay yeah. all right So MJ Keene property, zero Lumber Street, request to donate parcel to the commission. And I was delinquent in my duties. I didn't reach out to uh, Halt to ask them if they would be willing to do that, take custody of it, or stewardship. So can we maybe table that to the next meeting, Don? Yeah, sure. You know, I'll yep. reach out to them. Um, I'm sorry, so you were going to ask Halt for, for uh, to, to do what? If they if they were willing to take, um, you know, rather than the commission taking over stewardship of, of that parcel. But it's still the town. Yeah, he's at, but the yeah. The town would still be the owner. Right. Just rather than. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't yeah, looking I mean, to put a CR on the property. He no, was looking to divest to ownership. Right. Yeah. So oh, so he wants to. So he's gonna. He wants to sell it or just donate. No, no just he wants donate to donate the whole parcel. Yeah. Like okay. For a dollar, and that's so why it's to we the got town the, and then. That's why we got those comments from from um, uh, town council because I wasn't quite sure how that process went. Right. You know? um, yeah, because it's gonna go to town meeting and they gotta vote on it. That's what I right? thought. You know, um, but their comments, now I'm trying to find where I had. The town council's comments were basically recommending that you might want to do 
a search on it to see if there was anything that you're inheriting right with right. the property yeah right? yeah that's right well, site of assessment. course you gotta do it what do you mean you, you gotta do due diligence on any right. property that you require right right just like, to make God, sure we're not inheriting any. So this we, isn't so some special instance of us doing yeah. due diligence that was the entire dumps that we found on the but do, would you would you accept it pending that due diligence be done or pay to have the due diligence? Oh, no, like you, where does that oh, money that's come all, from? No, that's going to be done up front before you even decide to, yeah, to do the transaction. Yeah. yeah. I mean, unless you so were acquiring a property and you, put an, and you had an option on it, you know, personal or business, then you could, you know, you could put an, you could buy an option, do the due diligence and then get out or not. I don't think we can do that, either take it or not. We either accept it or not, but we have to right. do it. Yeah, you do title search and see if there's mm -hmm. any encumbrances of any kind. So and if there isn't, and if there isn't, and the if there isn't a CR on it, the stewardship costs are the stewardship costs are no, nominal because the conservation right. manages a slew of properties, yeah, properties that don't have CRs on it, and we just sort of we're starting to catch up on them now. You know, and this is a landlocked parcel, but it has access from the road to it. You know, but I don't think you're gonna. What I'm getting at is there's not a, there's not a neighbor right up against the property line, you know, dumping leaves and stuff like that. Right. You know, so uh, it, oh. it's essentially you know a landlocked piece. So I don't think you're gonna have you know because here he is the, 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 they're saying um, you know um, accepting first you know uh, figure out how the necessary stewardship costs can be secured. Could there be neighbors in the future? We could look at that, but um, I don't think so because it's surrounded by other town property, isn't it? Right. Well, on and on N Star, so it might get and it's on right. Oh, and on private property. Right. So, so potentially that could be. Yeah, you know. Um, so you've got. No, that's not a good one. Well, that'll show that. Let's see. That's the so this is, system. I'm pretty sure this is town land, and you've got this parcel right here that, that allows to get to it. So um, the easement. It's, yeah, a, it's contiguous to yeah. town land that's well, town land, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Right. So let's see if I can pick it up. I'm not a fan of the new GIS system. No, no. We <laughs> were down either. here complaining before the meeting started. Thank you still have access yeah. to the old system you were just showing. No, I don't. They shut me off. Really? So, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. They caught up to me. I thought yeah. you just showed the... Yeah. No, the, I printed that before we lost the old one. So, uh, I'm just trying to type. That's but all right. It, yeah, because yeah. I'm like... Yeah. Hey, he wants to know the, the address, <laughs> not not the map. The other one I could I could do map block and lot. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, this is a What's the map block and lot? Uh, uh, Five zero. Five zero. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So this should be. Should be as that. Come on, there we go. Yep, that's Ensta. This is town. And then this is private. And, and that's the same thing. This is the only 28 acres. Yep, private. And private. So. Okay. All right. So. I mean, we, the town, need to obviously do a title search, right? Um, and should be some, at least, initial kind of environmental assessment. Uh, you know, I don't mean, you know, so a phase one environmental assessment. Right, yeah. These days. Yes, there was no industrial activity. Somebody looks at it, there's not a giant pile of tires or yep. hazardous waste. Barrels of hazardous waste. That kind of so we just need to figure out. It's where already those adjacent to current property in the end. Yeah. Right. So we just need to figure out where those funds would come from to do that. Yeah. I mean, ten years ago, I would have done it. 
but <laughs> kind of don't have the resources. There uh, well, I wonder what we did on the adjacent parcel and when we acquired that. When did we acquire the other that one? That would have been, part of, I think, part of the subdivision. Yeah, I would think. Yeah. yeah. Why was this never part of that? Hold on for some reason. Yeah. Fell through the cracks. I'm not My sure. My guess is we've never, uh, we've never done any environmental due diligence on any property we've acquired. Some of the new ones, yeah. Yeah, the, new, the new ones we have. Yeah, like, yeah, um, like uh, as far Elm, as fruit uh, Elmwood Farms, it was. It was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think there was concerns, you know, oh, it's just of the history, you know, oh, with the this. pesticide use right. out there. And I'm trying to anything. remember, Don, who paid for that? Did CPC? See, that was, yeah. it was like CPC funds, and it was also, um, it was a trust for public land, and it was... Yeah, state funds. So that was a conglomeration of okay. uh, funding, you know. Whereas this is just a straight donation, and I assume right. it's not going to be much. You yeah, already so own. You already own the one next to it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Right. You know, so I would, I would think you're not looking at a lot of liability issues. Probably not, but but. Yeah, you still want to walk it. Certainly, you prove yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. definitely walk in, do a title search to make sure he, exactly. has, he owns it, you right. know, and has the ability to donate exactly. it. Exactly. That there's no encumbrances. Right. All right, I think we still have a little bit of more homework to do on it. Yep. Um, I'll table that. Okay. Got him on yes. Wilson Street. Yeah. A lot of Wilson Street activity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was down there. So, I just wanted to bring to your attention the the tree work I was I was dealing with, but if you notice on the the sketch plan that they put, because I was out there in May, and then it took a while for me to coordinate with their um, tree guy because I wanted to talk about how some of them were going to come down. If you notice, there was a, a gravel driveway shown here, and then there was like a little island here that was sort of like a just a it was just a mulch island. It might have been landscaped at, at, at one point, but when I just went back out there, I was there in May, and I was there in um, in April too. So you can see a little remnants of the crushed stone here, and a, a little of it up here. So in essence, this area of the driveway is outside your jurisdiction. There's under a buffer zone here. So this area just got repaved. So I told him I'd come and talk to you guys that now it's no longer crushed stone. There's no longer a little landscape island here. It's all now impervious. So I, I, I'm assuming probably about this section, you know, this little area here. Is so in like your, three or 400 square feet. Maybe. Yeah, it's in your jurisdiction. It's probably, you know, it's this area right here because basically here's the here's the walkway so it'll be behind so yeah. this area right here. Yeah. all right I didn't I mean, know if you guys were okay with me including that pavement in the exemption letter I'm gonna write for the uh, for the tree work everyone okay with that really small area yeah yeah I think that's fine though. okay And Ron Sarin, 136 yes. East Main Street. Yeah, I, I can't remember what I sent you. It might have been 12 trees, but it's come down to four now. So um, just got the final revised request um, today. And this is the most recent one. Yeah, the most recent one was was five but this one's off the, the table now so it's, it's basically um, these um, three trees here and this one they're all oaks uh, they're all live um, my photos. why do you want to take them down you'll see uh, we'll go past those those are off the table that's off the table so you're looking at that one. 
So you've got um, an oak tree here that's at the edge of the landscape area. And I don't know if you can tell it. Yeah, it's got a really, it's got a, 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 a tough bend here that they're concerned with. And it's a white oak and it had kind of unique flaking bark. It almost looked like a shag bark hickory up in the section where you get the, where you get the bend. Mm -hmm. So I think they were concerned with the, uh, with, uh, the structural integrity and the way it was leaning mm -hmm. towards their house. Okay. You know? So yeah. I think that one's fine. Yeah. And then, um, so, and then they've got three trees like here, here, and here. They, they originally would, were looking to take all, all of them out, but they, I was sort of talking with them and just, you know, just sort of going over, you know, what the, what the rationale was, um, what they were hoping to do. So they, they, they realized they're just really concerned with the three big ones. So you got one here and just sort of looking at the, um, the over, it's basically growing over the house. Mm -hmm. So you got this one that goes up through here. This is the most straightest one that doesn't really send a lot of branches over, but you know, we're all within striking distance. And here's the third one um, going over. So they just have concerns that the branches are going to come down on the house or the tree. And um, so it's th three of them. Yep. And then I mentioned, you know, typically the commission would look for, you know, mitigation, a couple of shrubs or a, one small tree. Uh, and the most recent request, um, they sort of hinted around to that. How did they word it? Um, they would like to, it's not five trees, it's four. We would like to remove and possibly replace with smaller trees or shrubs. Yeah, that's everyone okay with that? Yeah. Why is yes. it possibly? I don't know. Just let them know that's a, that you know we're asking. Them Just to do strike that. the word okay. possibly. Okay, <laughs> I'll work it in the uh, response letter. Yeah, thank you. All right. right. <laughs> must be future. Okay, Gilstrom, yeah. nineteen Hunters Ridge. I had um, sent them a. Um, plan of the, um, uh, the Asheville plan. They haven't had a chance to uh, mark it up for me yet, uh, but I told them I'd go out and take a, a look at them. Basically, you're going to have a tree on the other side, three trees on the on the, on the PIB. You probably got one right at the edge of the house that's dead, and then kind of right along the, the deck, you had two that were live trees. Let me show you those photos. This is a picture of the, the dead tree right there. It seemed right. like I would tell them not to. That's fine. Right. Yeah. And then uh, you've got a, a tree right here that is obviously trying to reach for light, but it was live and it's on the, it's in the no disturb area. And then the third one is right. So that's the, there's the, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, that's probably the dead one. The second one's probably right about here. And the third one is right here. Right. And that's the house for it? Yep. That's uh, uh, no, the, I'm sorry. That's the next house up. Okay. So this is the side yard here. So I don't think I have a shot of the, the house. <coughs> and I did notice a um, can of empty paint cans in the PIB. <laughs> so I'll be asking them to remove that as well. Right. So that's their PIB? <laughs> is the stone wall right there so yeah the PIB is like right the here and right here so all the activity is on one. the other side of the PIB I mean, what, so, so what was the reason they wanted to take the two live ones out I haven't got that far yet so okay. I just wanted you guys at least to show um, that I, I could deal with the with the dead tree yeah the dead one I, I think we're okay with but um, the other two I mean it's so like it's far enough away and it's in the no disturb area and it's so not leaning right over the house right so yeah okay. it's basically all on that side of the PIB yeah all right I'll reach out to them to get further information on the, on the two live trees and I'll provide that to you guys okay thank you
And then we got a request from the DPW for the um, extended drawdown for this year. So I, I did talk to uh, John Westerling. Yep. And um, they said what they, they were going to do the extended drawdown last year, but they weren't able to do it because of the resident on Spindle Island who owns a well, a shallow well was afraid that if they did the extended drawdown that they would lose the water in the well. So the DPW with the Lake Mass Monarch um, Association decided that they would do the normal drawdown last year and try to reach some type of resolution with this homeowner where they would either provide them bottled water or work something out where the lake association would put a new well in for them, get funding for that. Or they weren't really sure what it was going to do, but they pushed it off till this year. It still hasn't been resolved with the Spindle Island folks. So in the uh, unlikely event that they do reach a resolution, they wanted to get this <laughs> extended drawdown request in before the deadline so that they could do it um, if they got approval from the resident, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So. Um, okay. Just yeah. wanted to let you guys be noted that they did submit the request. Okay. But they did note, you know, if they, if they can't, as previous past, if they can't, all all parties reach a reach a uh, an an amendable agreement, then they'll just do the normal um, four to five foot drawdown. Right. Okay. Just out of curiosity, did, did, yeah. how deep is their well that it's that affected by the? Oh, it's I think it's like 30 feet. Yeah, because um, they were. I think it's that deep. Because Bethany Island, you get way back in the from. day, way back yeah. in the day, before we, so they I even know. had, when you guys were doing the NOI review, um, part of the thing was documenting everyone who has shallow so wells. Feet. It's not just them, there, there are others, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then they said, okay, we, um, you'd have to make arrangements when you go to do the first one, which they did, to see, you'd have to double back to figure out who's going to be negatively impacted and you would have to set up contingencies to you know uh, give them water which they did and they looked at and then all the other people reported that their shallow wells weren't affected it was, it was only that one really and I know there's another island out there but those people aren't out there during the, the winter, winter you know so mm -hmm. others might be impacted but they're not complaining because they're not out there you know? so. I don't even think it's 30 feet deep, though. Yeah, I know. It's just not quite that same. Yeah. Okay. And the assistant town manager memo done yeah. in the town owned parcel. Yeah, the email, she sent me the email, I think, on Thursday or Friday after we posted, so technically I couldn't forward it to you guys because I had to put it on the CA report. Okay. So, I don't know um, if I saw that. No, you, you, you haven't. Didn't, you didn't so I'm going to okay. try and grab you, a, um, and I'll email it now that you guys have. I'll come together and have the meeting, and so uh, before I leave tonight, I'll uh, I'll email it to you. But uh, let me just uh, dig it out. Tomorrow's uh, fine. Get it right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to email it to us tonight. I'm not going to read it tonight. I needed something right. to read. Uh, I'm not I'm going to bed until I read it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, a parcel right here that is town owned, and there's other town parcels around it. <clears throat> And I guess someone's interested in purchasing this town-owned parcel. And what I was hoping to do was, I just haven't had, there you go, there's a light up of all the different parcels. So it's this one that is of interest. But uh, I, think I, I think I got a GIA. And I, I'm pretty sure we have filings for some of these houses up here. And you can sort of see on the GIS is an intermittent stream here. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking there's some... Um, um, wetlands associated here and if this goes down to what I think it does and then there's a culvert under Lakeshore Drive mm -hmm. um, you got you know a direct link into the lake mm -hmm. you know so right. I think from the commission standpoint the commission might want to make comments that you might have some BBW here and you know owning this land helps well, protect the, way yeah, helps us. Protect we're the asking for it that's my husband Really? You yeah. Are? Okay. You are, you are asking to buy it, to purchase the property? Yeah. 
Why don't you just sit oh. behind us then? Okay. Well. I know, right? I just realized. I was like, <laughs> what the hell is Princeton Road? Uh, okay. no. I was going to ask, was the town actively marketing this property for sale? Or did the no, no. prospective purchaser approach the town? Correct. Approach According that. to the town, um, this is the assistant town manager. Town owns uh, possible, yes, totally. and, a, and an abutter is expressing an interest in inquiring it from the town. So before proceeding, I'd like to make sure that the town does not have a potential planned use or need for the property. Please let me know whether you have any recommendations in this regard. That disposition Should of land would eventually yeah. require oh. a town meeting. Is there building. a backyard? Oh. Uh, so. Okay. That so road is like I a should, paper road. I, maybe we should sit on the other side and take questions. <laughs> yeah, so I figured I'd table this because you guys didn't have a chance. We do want that memo tonight now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Does the commission have any questions from Mrs. Oh, Reed? Can you introduce yourself, please? <laughs> <laughs> Carrie has oh, left, Carrie has left the commission. No, no I'm, I'm pleased. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, it's just Carrie Reed. Oh. <laughs> so I, I have a question. So you, you, um, you, you, you bought this property. Yeah. You would, you would be interested in purchasing it to maintain it as conservation land or to develop it, if uh, you know. We just, yeah, we were just going to leave it empty. So we own you that right one. Here? Yeah, and okay. then we own a plot, the lot next to us, so we're doing a renovation there. All right. But there's paper road, town owns a lot next to us, and we just didn't want some developer to buy the lot next to us and that one and build a house back there. Mm. So, but it's, town, well, that's a guy. I would agree with that, but it's already, but it's town owned and in order for the town to dispose of it by sale isn't something that they can just do without town meeting though, right? Right, yeah. So you guys have to So, okay. so in terms so of somebody potentially coming and purchasing and developing that's it, that's Duffield. unlikely. That's Duffield, so. Well, someone else could buy it <coughs> and then, you know, one of the other neighbors. Well, I think it's landlocked. Is, land is, is it buildable? It. Do you know? Or is it what? Well, part of it's wet on the whatever. West. Everything seems to be I, I, was, I just didn't. I didn't have time 16, to research 18, this. I thought 14. we might have filings on sixteen to fourteen. Yep. And I dig that, and you know, then it would sh might show a little, little of some BBW here. I don't think we'd have anything that would delineate so this. House is not there. <coughs> what? Can yeah, you highlight the other town on property, yeah, Don? That exist. Is that? Yeah. That's can you uh, still uh, do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me bring that up. Um, so. so it's highlighted here. Yeah, so all that. So right? we're looking at this one, and yeah. that's town. So the and that one. So, so technically, somebody could come and develop that paper road and build on all those lots. The road that's below there. This one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this got discontinued. But that's all town owned. Yeah. This got discontinued, and well, according to what, what. Um, yeah, it's not like Lane Leonard Street or Buckley. Road. Well, right. Technically, it's not like a bio house. Uh, it's not like Buckley. It's not been constructed. It was, well, yeah, who knows? Lou Mike. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it, was discon it was discontinued by vote of town meeting. In two th yeah, who knows? You could draw. I think that, didn't that happen? Yeah, so a Buckland? developer could buy one of your neighbor's properties and then go to the town and buy the back piece of property and put yeah. something in there. Or from so the other If road. the town yeah. would sell it, but. Right. I, I, I would certainly be up at town meeting against the town selling it, any of that property. Um, maybe only one. Well, there's a lot, because there's a lot to, of no, To lots. a developer. Yeah. Right? Oh. So I was going to say, you just lost a vote, Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> well. I don't know if you think, they don't tell I, I don't you who they sell it to. I don't see why you, why would you buy it, though, if it was protected because it's a town property? Well, it's only protected if it's got a conservation restriction or something. It's, yeah. But it's owned by the well, town. I mean, protected by the fact that it's owned by the town. But I mean, I guess if a town meeting could vote yeah. just to sell it, it just yeah. say, hey, let's make some money and sell, sell it. We, we, there's yeah. plenty of property in town that the town could sell that, to make some money that's not as critical as this. But the point is, is that yeah. it could happen. Until, yeah. unless somebody wants to go the other route and put a, well, try and put a... It could happen, but that's what we're being, that's what you're asking right. for, for it to happen now, as opposed to it could happen. And that's what I was thinking, if the commission wanted to comment, if you're looking at, in toto, these town-owned parcels, do they, you know, um, have impact under the town's if, wetland bylaw, you if know, it was to helping protect the lake, you know, and I think you guys might be saying something like, we wouldn't want the town to sell off this land because we think it's, you know, it's 
and having oh. inherent values to chapter right. 206. Right. I think if Unless that was that record, a way that would help us too. We just don't want anybody to build back there. Right. Now, is that all under the, uh, is that all under uh, the select board, although it's board of select? I think, I, yeah, I, I, anything that doesn't that have a, control? that doesn't have a management, you know, like a, a board that manages it, if it just says the town of Hockington right. and there's no other, selectman. nothing's been assigned, so I think selectman. default it goes it to is. select. Is that what these are, I this one? I'd have to look at each each one, but I just, I basically I just grabbed information on the one that she did, uh, I grabbed the uh, property record card, I believe, right here, and well, the, it didn't have any um, board assigned to it. Oh, so you know, so I'd have to do this for each yeah, of those so parcels to figure out. And I know, you know, I knew this one wasn't in the because I've got a whole file of just HCC managed town owned parcels, and this wasn't one of them. You know, I'd have to look at the others, but I don't think I don't think a lot of those are. To the tell you the truth, I don't think the concoms involved. But yeah. I could, I, you know, if I had some time, I'd, I'd look through each one. I'd so get a map, bl map block and lot and, you know. The former paper road is privately owned. All mm, of it right now. No, right? That would still be. The paper roads defer to, like, the paper road, half of it, the way that it works is half of it goes to. Oh, yeah. When you abandon the road, it goes yeah, half. Yeah, oh, that's right. Half but that's yeah, not so shown we would own Because there's one behind my house, and right. half of it went to us, and half of it goes to the. But that's not shown. Yeah, here, so though. the town would have all of this, the paper road. Yeah. Right. You know, so that's all. Hence, right. yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, yeah then it would get this would get divvied up between these people. Well, right. but right. why hasn't it been since it was abandoned? It has. I assume it has, yeah. It doesn't appear that way so if you normally look at the new assessment well, the town and then, and then is someone town. gonna argue wait a minute I got a I got a deed from 1845 that says I got yeah. legal access through here and the town just hasn't on. updated the map is that okay yeah. so I have a question for for you so if if the Commission thought that these lots especially we have combined lots like that right they kind of start to make something a little bit more significant mm -hmm. right. were important to protection of resources, especially the lake, you know, why wouldn't you potentially petition Board of Selectmen or town meeting or whomever to say, we want those lots under our care and custody, not I would under agree. Board of Selectmen? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I, I would, yeah, no, I would agree. One step away. Put a C on it. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think first you'd, you'd make your comments and, and you might want to, you know, put that in your comment letter. You know? But if we did it, wouldn't we put a CR on it? You don't have to put a CR on it, but that is no, generally then, what we try to do. Because, yeah. there does not need to be a, a CR on right. If you're any just town managing it, yeah. So right. if it was managed by the commission, right? Then It'd be like all the other land that's under our care. Yeah. Custody then the developer wouldn't be able to just come in and buy it. No, you know, no, no, right. In the it's con it would be conservation. Right. Well, I don't know what the state would be. Then I don't know if then yeah. I mean, because I think there might be a couple of passes there where it actually says the Conservation Commission owns it, you know, as opposed to the town of Hoppington yeah, under the that. management of. So I just, yeah, I, I don't know how, I don't know legally if then a town meeting, you know, okay, screw it, you guys manage it, the but conservation we, freaking, commission. we own it, and we're going to do what, we're going to build, you know, um, yeah. solar field there. I, I don't know, you know, it has it's to be not getting in the legal lease, you know, we, it's like, the ooh. Conservation Commission cannot and never could acquire one. Has to be the town that acquired the town. That's what I would assume. But then, absolutely. But then you read some of these deeds, you know, you're like, what does that mean? <laughs> you yeah, know, I'm just cold. saying when it when it gets to the lawyers, when it gets up to their level, I don't. Uh, I just no. all, all bets are off. <laughs> okay, so maybe we should write a letter and ask. That's not true. All bets aren't off. Well, I'll I'll email this out so you guys get a chance to look at it all over. And I, how about if I I table it and you know, and then you guys can. Sounds good. Right. All right. And in the interim, if I have any time, I'll try and do some more research and see if I can put a draft letter. I think so. I might be pie in the sky. Thank you. Hey, Don. Don. Yeah. He's up to the far. Chicken coop back there or something. To the right. You need a south. You want to give him a laser? Well, no. I guess it's to the far south. The strip of land there is that the so-called old Hopkinton Road. This is the old. Yeah. All the way up to EMC. Yep. Out by. Where that guy built those houses? Yeah. And, and EMC owns all the stuff on the right, and some Boy Scout, the, some EMC. of the Boy Scout owns. Yeah, if I can get oh, into the Boy Scouts the, owning it. If I can get into this lovely big chunk of land. Yeah, yeah. There used to be a scout camp there. 
But don't they still own Boy Scouts of America? I don't think so. I heard they transferred them. Whatever. They did like a land swap with EMC. But the old Hopkinton Road is, you know, isn't on paper as a potential road or anything. Actually, I think. I think the town might sell on that. So this one is uh, EMC. Wallace, Sharon Wallace. This is, I think, the EMC. This is yeah, that's still EMC right there. Yep. Okay. Who's Sharon Wallace? Is that that? I think that's the property then that the Boy Scouts use, maybe. I think so. So that's yeah, that's EMC uh, right there. Yeah. And that the gets private along. That would be uh, good. Land for them to give. Pine Island Road down here. Those yeah. are all landlocked. All them that we get the Yeah, these yeah. ones yeah. up here. Yeah. 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 There's some old foundations and stuff back there. Okay. Yeah. That helps them avoid paying federal taxes again or more. All right, the commission reorganization, we took care of that last meeting. But I wanted to, we did a bunch of it, but. Uh, oh, right, for the. Uh, for Zach? Yeah. Because Ted wasn't here, so I thought we tabled that. Right, we did. You're correct. So I think I'm hesitatingly in for one more year on Zach. I think it'll be my fifth year, but. I think I was going to try to be better to little league. You, than you, almost, got, you almost got oh, voted in, you in know, absentia. no hesitantly, you know, yeah. but they were nice and, and held off. Um, <laughs> Thanks for taking over. But a year from now, I'd love and is to that is it? You, it's every year, it's, right? Well, they reorganized. Um, so some positions so the con -con has are two-year positions, yeah. but the appointed but, from committees is yeah. a one-year. Yeah. yeah. You're trying and to it's, cut and it's recommendations. We we send a name to recommend recommend right. to planning board. My wife is hoping I will cut back on all this volunteer activity, but <laughs> well, we got you for another year. There, oh, well, I'm here. Excited. This is the, the biggest keeper for me right now. Let's this just, and little. Let's make a motion uh, to that effect. So, I'll make, so I'll make the motion one more year for Ted on Zach. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 One opposition. Zach. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have him abstain. Hesitation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then Don, there was. Um, I saw the other stop. document that you sent out, the um, CR stop. for the no, we West Elm property, um, Aho. Yeah, um, I just wanted to. So the um, EEA with those comments. Yeah, around. I just wanted to get that on your because. They did everything according, you know, they did submit the application in time, you know, before we started work. And now we're in that, that square dance between the state and the state said, okay, yeah, we looked at your application and here are our comments. And you guys, so that was and the then state you looked comments. at it, okay. and then and then I emailed the, their attorney going, the commission looked at it, they're fine with everything the state just said. Yeah. Why don't, you know, you look at it, and if you've got comments, can you give us a copy of that? Uh, you, you know, if you're going to make any changes to whatever the state said, and then um, let's get this to him. And then um, um, Matt had just did a, um, a site uh, inspection, and he just said, "By the way, what's the status on the CR?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, what is that?" And the lawyer never got back to me. So what I just to the chairs, to the chair and the vice chairs, I just sent a, a, a response to the lawyer, and I copied the state on it. Okay. You know, to say that to show the state that we're staying you, on top you guys already it. did. You you made you reviewed it, and made comments back in May, um, but. You know, his his lawyer hasn't acted on, on okay. the comments that they so got it. Just want to keep the ball still moving forward. Yeah, nice. Uh, so just, just kind of an idea. FYI. I want to keep you guys in the loop on that. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Okay, a motion to adjourn. Moved. And a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. All right. All right. I think you have to come over here. To be a no. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you, H. Kim. Uh,